What's up guys, c 13 here, and in today's video, we're going to be unboxing the Suaoki G500 Solar Generator. Alright guys, so this is the box it came in. I'm sorry it's not fully in frame, but don't worry, I will keep all the important stuff in frame. Now, this is the box it came in, and if we see here from the shipping details, I've removed my info, but if we look at where it ships from, you can actually see that it comes from California. So, I'm not sure, I can't be positive, but I'm pretty sure Suaoki has an office in California, so that should be beneficial as well if you ever need to get service or warranty work or parts or something like that, uh, just because basically, if you buy something direct from a company that's only located in China, even if they're a big company, half the time I just write off the warranty because it, it, there's just no way you're going to get something there and back in any reasonable amount of time. With that being said, I will just briefly tell you that this thing is currently available for $4.99 on Amazon, but there are a couple discounts that can reduce the price up to $165 off of that. There's a $45 coupon you can clip as well as a discount code listed in the description. Don't miss that. I missed that and so I only think I only got the 45 off. If you combine the two, the offer can be a little lower for the coupon code, so you might only get 75 off. That's I think what I got when I tried the second time to see if the code would work. But definitely take advantage of that. I will leave on screen whether this deal is still valid. But uh, let's go ahead and get into this thing. So this is the Suaoki G500. Now, if you guys saw my video of why I was deeply disappointed with the Max Oak Blue Eddy AC20 200 watt hour unit, uh, you'll know that that primarily focused on the output of the AC inverter, just being incredibly, incredibly poor uh, and, and dirty. So with that being said, I decided to skip any of the other amateur hour smaller units and I went for something pretty big. Now 500 watt hours is enough to run the CPAP all night with pretty much all the bells and whistles turned on. So so for me that's just the humidifier but still that takes enough power and I think you know intermittently that's going to draw about 40 to 50 watts and that should be enough to get me about almost eight hours of sleep. So I'm happy with this and there we go guys. Now, I will tell you some of the details that I know right now, and that this tank has a 90% depth of discharge, so you'll have 450 usable watt hours, uh, but you have 500 total, and that's just to protect the battery, because this is still a standard lithium ion battery using standard NMC technology. I don't think this is, this is definitely not using a lithium iron phosphate or anything fancy like that, but that's all right, because Honestly, if you reduce the depth of discharge, you're going to re re increase the lifespan of even standard lithium ion. Turn this around for you guys. All right, so we get our manual here and a thank you card. Put that to the side. And then on top, we get two boxes here. So we've got our AC adapter. Now, this is one thing I was curious about. I was curious to see exactly what the output of the AC adapter is to see how fast it could charge from the wall. So let's take a look. The AC adapter is 29.4 at 3 amps. So that is just under 90 watts. So that's, that's not the worst, but it can charge faster than that via solar. Now the max solar input on this thing, I'm pretty sure is 150 watts. That being said, it has a wide voltage range and an MPPT charge controller. So you're gonna get maximum power for whatever your solar array looks like. Here we got our car charger, and I'm sure underneath this is something pretty exciting. And what you would all expect for a solar generator is our solar panel connect cable. And you'll see it goes from standard MC4 connectors to an Anderson power pole connector. So you've got a real good set of easy compatible connectors on either end, even at the solar generator. So there is no huge concern if you lose this cable or it breaks or it wears out or something, 
you can just buy another one of these on Amazon. Whereas some of these other companies, you know, you're, you're still dealing with some sort of barrel plug. Even if it is a common connector, you're gonna have to build another one of those if you lose it. All right, let's get the solar generator out of here. All right, guys, there it is. Man, this thing is kind of chilly. About 35 degrees outside, so. I've left it inside for about half an hour to 45 minutes to warm up so that it'll actually operate. Technically, this thing can operate under 30 degrees. It just can't charge. That's how lithium batteries are. Now, when I was doing research on this thing, I, this handle looked really cheap to me, but it actually feels really sturdy. There's the reinforced plastic on both sides. You've got the aluminum in the middle. Now, I still think at these connection points, it is plastic, so that is a little bit of a downside. But even so, you can see, hopefully, inside there, if I tilt this, just how reinforced with ribs that plastic is. So I'm hoping that that stands up because it does feel a lot more sturdy than I, I thought it was gonna be just really chintzy, but it also has nice little locking tabs on the bottom, so it locks in and it won't rattle around when you don't need it. So here's the front of the unit. You've got your DC output and then two options for barrel plug DC. And here you've got your USB DC outputs. You've got two USB quick charge 3.0s and one USB-C. Now, unfortunately this USB-C is pretty much only an 18 watt output. It's not a power delivery port. Uh, Suaoki, if you're listening, I really love to see this be like a 45 or even a 60 watt output. That would be great on this unit. And then you've got your AC outputs that are at a 300 watt continuous max. They will surge up to 600. So that's the front, let's take a look. There's nothing as you see on the back or the sides or even the bottom other than the sticker. You have an air vent here and an air vent this side. And I don't know if there's a fan on both sides but they're definitely both functional. They're not fake louvers on one side. I can see inside uh, on this side as well as this one. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the testing of this unit because I am very curious to know whether this is a regulated output. All right guys, so I've got a couple tools at my disposal here. Whenever you're testing a solar generators or any real devices inverter output, you need a couple tools. I got my multimeter and I got my kilowatt device. So this is gonna let us test the AC output and this is going to let us check the voltage of the DC output. So let's take a look. All right, so let's go ahead and power on the unit. And you'll notice this display is very much like the Max Oak Blue Eddy unit. Let me go ahead and show you that comparison here. Grab this one and I'll go ahead and turn it on. And you'll see it's the exact same idea. The colors are a little different, but you have the same thing and you have the same five bar battery indicator, which, uh, well, wait for my review, but you know how I feel about that. All right, so this is actually gonna be the perfect test because this unit is only at just over 50% probably state of charge. So this should give us a perfect test to see whether or not this, this output is regulated. Let's put that at DC. Go ahead and turn on DC. So these ports should be on. And now let's check it out. I'm gonna try and get this in frame for you guys. All right, and you guys can see that. Hey, you know, I think this thing is regulated. Look at that, 12.84 volts. Now to give you some perspective, the Blue Eddy would put out only 12.4 volts at fully charged. So even in a fully charged state, it would only produce 12.4 out of here. Basically under 80%, you would be lucky to get over 11.5. That's incredible. So this really is a regulated output. Oh man, I'm already loving this thing. All right guys, so next thing we're gonna check real quick is the USBs. So I've got both a USB-C to USB-C cable. So this one right here. So I'll go ahead and plug one in into the solar generator. And I'll plug the other end into my iPad, let's see. Yep, charging. And then I'll go ahead and plug one of these USB-A to USB-C cables into one of the quick charge ports and plug that into this Android phone here. And as you can see, it's charging. Now this phone doesn't have quick charge 3.0 even though it has quick charge from its own manufacturer. So it's not gonna quick charge, but you know, that's not important to me because it is charging. And as you can see in the corner there. All right, guys, so this is looking real good. But you know, 
We're not done yet. Because for me, one of the most important features of one of these units is how does the AC inverter function? So we've got a 300 watt max load here, but we're gonna first check some things. So let's go ahead and turn this on. All right, the first thing we wanna see is what's the voltage look like? So because these are upside down, I'm gonna just turn this around. Okay, first good sign, we're getting 109.5 volts. Remember with the Blue Eddy, what we were getting, I'll give you guys a little refresher. Turn on this one, turn on AC output. If we go back here, look what we're getting for voltage, 99.7. That is very low. Uh, so this is a huge improvement already, but we're not out of the woods yet. Now, the most important thing for me after voltage is how clean is this output? Because if you've watched my previous video, you know that with the Max Oak Blue Eddy unit, the AC20, the, the 200 watt hour unit, it was such a dirty output that it was actually interfering with the touchscreens of certain devices like my PS Vita as well as my iPad Pro. So let me go ahead and we'll we'll try the PS Vita and see if it interferes with the touchscreen or not. All right guys, I got my PS Vita right here and I got the power brick. So let's go ahead, plug it in. And just so you know, we make sure that the kilowatt isn't affecting anything. I'm plugging it directly into the unit here. And we'll go ahead and plug in the charger right there. So you can see it is charging. And now let's see what happens when I turn it on. We'll know if there's an issue if it starts freaking out. So if the touch screen starts glitching, like I showed in the other video, we'll know that the output is dirty uh, and will not be useful for audio devices and that sort of thing. Look at that, guys. Look at that. There is no glitching. I can easily swipe this little you know the whole ps vita band-aid interface as it's, as i call it but uh look at that i wasn't even able to do that on the blue eddy unit it was just doing it on its own and the touch screen was completely out of control but as you can see here i'm plugged straight in not through anything else and you know we, we just got perfectly smooth touch interactions there is no uh, dirty output on this in ac inverter and just to double check that, we'll also switch over and check the frequency response on this AC inverter. Just flipping the unit so that you guys can read the screen. And we'll go to the Hertz here. And we're getting a solid, perfect 60. Now, I know this actually isn't showing us the waveform, but still, the fact that there is no change and it is always at 60 is a good indicator for me. If we take a look at the Blue Eddy unit, if we plug this in and then we go to our frequency here, it is right now showing 60, but it would often dip under and over uh, quite quickly, it would oscillate. So again, not the most definitive test, but for me, the definitive test was the, you know, the proof is in the pudding, right? And when I plugged in my PS Vita and I got no touchscreen disruption whatsoever. I knew this is a good inverter, okay? The inverter inside here, trash, all right? All right, guys, well, there's not much else to check. So the last thing I'm gonna do is we'll plug in the AC power brick and then we'll see if she charges, right? Because obviously if this unit doesn't work and doesn't charge, then we have a problem. So let's go ahead, I'm just gonna take this part here and Got that plugged in. All right, now if you were asking me, all right, if I was designing this, I think I would actually put the solar input as well as the adapter input, and I'd put that on the back, just because, especially if you plan to use this a lot, uh, it could be better to have this set up somewhere in your car and then have the input run to the back. But I guess if you're gonna be constantly plugging in and unplugging this unit, then it probably makes more sense to keep that on the front, but uh, it just seems a little bit easier to, to knock off if it's hanging there. And also it'll disrupt your other outputs if you're trying to use it while it's being charged, if the, uh, if the input hangs down. All right, I'll go ahead and plug it in. And as you can see, it is charging. Now it seems like we're only getting about 80 watts going in right now, but it does seem to be accepting a charge. Now I would show you guys solar, but today is a horrible, horrible, dark, wet, and cold winter day. 
So we're not gonna be able to show you that today. I'm not, I'm not getting any output from any solar that I've got. Now the last thing is, before I let you guys go, you probably wanna see if this is capable of a larger load. So let's go ahead and get something that's a little bit more, more power intensive. I've got this little tiny Dirt Devil college dorm room vacuum. But you know, vacuums draw a lot more power than people think. So uh, you know, this little thing right here probably draws over 150 watts. So let's go ahead and see if it'll operate. Go ahead and plug it in. And I will tilt the screen up so that you guys can read it. And I will turn it on. And here we go. So I don't know if you guys could see that. It actually was only drawing about 106. I think it had a startup surge up uh, past 120. And um, that is very good. It, it, it handled it perfectly. And, uh, and you know what, just to double check that, uh, we're gonna plug in our kilowatt here and we'll see how bad the voltage drop is. So like we said, the resting voltage is 109.5, 109.4. And we'll see how far that dips down. I know it's upside down, but uh, hopefully you guys can uh, extrapolate from that. But uh, I'll also put on screen uh, the lowest voltage drop it experiences. So I don't know if you guys saw that. It, 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 it didn't even drop past uh, 108. It was 108.8. .8. So uh, that's excellent. You know, that's excellent performance right there. But... Yeah, so I mean, I don't know what else to say, man. This thing is looking pretty good. Obviously, I wanna be able to give you guys a review and so that's gonna come later. So with that being said, so far, I am very impressed with the Suaoki G500. You know, it, it exceeds my expectations and especially guys, if you, you know, be smart about this. If you get that coupon code, you'll definitely be getting a good deal with this unit. Obviously, I'll be doing a review on this. So definitely give me some time and uh, that'll be coming. So if you like the video, be sure to give me a like. If you have any questions, comments, or your own experiences with the G500, definitely leave that below. I think we all wanna hear about that. And if you wanna see more, including that future review, don't forget to get subscribed.